women are accusing movie producer Harvey Weinstein of sexual misconduct. Actress Cara Delevingne is one of the latest who says she was one of Weinstein's victims. She appears in the new film Tulip Fever, which was produced by Weinstein. Well, she says Weinstein made unwanted sexual advances toward her early in her career, but she never spoke out because she felt guilty. At least two dozen women are accusing Weinstein of misconduct, ranging from sexual harassment to rape. Journalist Ronan Farah wrote about the allegations in The New Yorker. There were 16 former and current executives and assistants that spoke to me for this story who corroborated these allegations, who said they had either personally witnessed things that they were troubled by or participated in what they described as a pattern of meetings that were just sort of thin cover for predatory advances on young women. This was very enmeshed in company business. And again and again, they said everybody knew. Joining us now, psychologist and author Bethany Marshall and former district attorney Ambrosio Rodriguez. Thank you for both being with us. Welcome. Thank okay, you. so there was this relative silence that we had. Yes. But now many in Hollywood, as well as many on the political side, the Democrat side, they're coming forward to condemn Weinstein, notably Hillary Clinton, uh, as she talked to Freed Zakaria. This is somewhat she had to say. Well, I certainly didn't, and I don't know who did, but I can only speak for myself, and I think speak for many others uh, who knew him primarily through politics. Um, but the courage of these women coming forward now uh, is really important because it can't just end with one person's disgraceful behavior and the consequences that he is now facing. This has to be a wake up call and shine a bright spotlight on anything like this behavior anywhere at any time. Uh, and I think we just clipped the top of that question from Paris where he said everyone knew but no one knew and her answer was well I certainly didn't know um, what was happening. Meryl Streep adamant that she had no idea. Judy Dench who famously has a tattoo of Harvey Weinstein on her, on her buttocks completely unaware so she says Bethany you know, this list goes on and on and on. This seems to be the biggest open secret in Hollywood that no one <laughs> knew about. I mean, is that possible? Well, I kind of knew about it. I'm yeah. in clinical practice in Beverly Hills. My colleagues knew about it. It's not a surprising story. I, I think the reason Hillary Clinton is so shocked is that this is not just, if the allegations are true, it's not just uh, sexual um, acting out. This is sociopathic predatory behavior with young women. It's a very specific type of offending pattern. If, if Harvey were a patient in my practice, he's not, but if someone came into my practice with this kind of a story of forced oral sex, forced vaginal sex, a grooming pattern that was extensive, asking women for massages, targeting younger women, I would guess that I would begin to think about my patient as what we would call a power rapist. A power rapist is somebody who's very narcissistic, sociopathic, who relates to women on the basis of power rather than affection, enjoys belittling the victims, and enjoys the power differential, actually gains satisfaction mm. from it. So, and, so very quickly, so the, the crimes are so horrendous that no one wants to turn up to knowing anything about this, is, I think is essentially the point here, right? Uh, Bethany, to pick up on what you're saying there, what is also interesting is as we read these accounts from all these women, it's the sense, and they all, are, most of them are expressing this feeling of guilt. This feeling of guilt that they went up to his hotel room, this guilt that they didn't scratch at him or kick at him. How common is that, that sense of responsibility that women who go through this, come out the other side with? Well, sexual abuse victims always feel guilty, whether it's a child, uh, whether it's a member of the LGBT community, whether it's a woman, everybody feels guilty because they go into the situation wanting something. A child might want love. Uh, an actress may want a role. Um, so they want something and they consent to something other than what they think they're consenting to. So it makes them feel guilty, then they're ashamed to tell other people and they repress the entire incident. Okay, so mm. keep that in mind. This is how one of the victims, or Laura Savan, described mm. what actually happened to her at the hands of Weinstein. I say the word trapped. People ask me, like, couldn't you have kicked and screamed? And yes, I, I think if my life was threatened, I probably could have gotten away from him. But I'm five foot one. He's six foot two. He's much, much larger than me. He was blocking the only exit out. And, you know, at that time, I was I was 28 years old. I'd, I'd never been in a situation like this before. I didn't know how it ended. I didn't know what to do. 
So, so Ambrosia, when we listen to all of these accounts that we're hearing from a whole lot of women now, what are the chances that there could be formal charges brought against YC, and not just against him, but about the company as well, especially if they were aware of all the payments which were uh, going to these women essentially, you know, to keep them quiet? Right. I was shocked about what happened in New York. Mm. Um, the, 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 right, the, I mean, that's a big issue because in New York, they had more than enough evidence to charge him. And now the question is, why aren't they charging him now? Mm -hmm. Statues of limitations do not apply. And now they have two uh, alleged victims. Uh, Miss Vance, I believe is her name, the one who's a student at Middlebury, and the model that was the hotel that they had the, basically a confession on tape. Mm -hmm. And I also expect that there's going to be a full investigation by the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office and LAPD as to what happened in Los Angeles. Because now that this has come out and it has become such a huge story, uh, I think no one in law enforcement and in politics likes to see rich and powerful people get away with it. And they do all too often. So now the investigation is really going to take, uh, going to take a full head of steam and go through what it can. I mean, all these women are coming forward. All those headwinds become tailwinds. Right, I and, and, and I think that the, the investigation is going to go, there's going to be a lot of witnesses because, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the people that helped them, mm -hmm. right? And I want to talk about that because what we're really talking is about pimping, right? Because that's what they were doing. His associates, uh, assistants, whatever, producers, that were involved in this are looking at criminal liability. It really depends though on the how aggressive and how bold the prosecution is going to be. Because don't forget, rape is not just rape in the terms of force or violence. Mm -hmm. Rape can also be done through duress. And so if these women, if these women had sexual contact or intercourse or whatever with Harvey Weinstein because of duress, that's also rape in California. And if these producers knew about it, assistance, whatever, they are also part of a conspiracy. And Bethany, to pick up on that uh, and to make a distinction between those who helped set up meetings, who helped procure, if you will, um, and those who just knew about it, right? Mm -hmm. Who were just in Merrimax um, or the Weinstein Company and they knew, they'd heard these rumors. How does a culture take hold mm. where people are hearing this stuff, it's being reported, it's being swept under the, the, the rugs, and people, even people who are in positions of power who don't really have that much to lose still stay quiet? I think it happens in two ways. One is something that I call institutional sociopathy. It's when one person with a corruption of conscience hires another person who has a corruption of conscience. And then that person hires a friend who has a corruption of conscience. And it's like the cancer grows. We saw this with Michael Jackson. I know that's an old story, but he had security guards, all kinds of people on Neverland Ranch, and they all saw him with children. And they nobody really called the police. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing, uh, institutional sociopathy. I think the other piggybacks on something that I heard in my practice all day today. You know, I'm not, patients of mine came and said, well, I'm not surprised. This happens in Hollywood. He's a powerful figure. Normalizing it. Really minimizing and normalizing it. Men who are sexual predators already minimize and normalize their behavior. When everybody else starts doing it too, it becomes so toxic. We were talking about Cyrus Vance, who is the New York DA, who uh, is the one who's under fire now for not following up on this prosecution. Oh, I do want to play what he said about why he did not follow up on that case in New York uh, with the actress or the model Ambra Gutierrez. This is what uh, Cyrus Vance had to say. If we had a case that we felt we could prosecute and my, my experts felt we could prosecute against Harvey Weinstein, we would have. We take on many, many, many difficult sex crime prosecutions with individuals uh, irrespective of their, their background or their money. So that's not an issue for us. We really are based on the facts, not what people think about it. Uh, and Bridget, how much of a problem is it that Cyrus Vance took tens of thousands of dollars of uh, political donations it, from Weinstein's lawyers? It's a huge problem. I don't believe him. Uh, if it was some bodega owner in Brooklyn or in Lower East, the Lower East Side, he would have been prosecuted with that right. tape. This is because Harvey Weinstein and the Cyrus Vance made a decision as to whether or not he wanted to take on Harvey Weinstein. He decided he didn't want to. 
And this has nothing to do with whether or not there was enough evidence. I mean, I've, I've prosecuted these cases. I've filed these cases. There's more than enough evidence to go right. forward. You have a confession on that, too. Yeah, there's a wiretap case. Right. Uh, we're out of time. I want to yeah, thank you for being with us. But I just want to put up the list here of the number of big names mm -hmm. that have been mm -hmm. taken down this year because of sexual harassment. Apart from Harvey Weinstein, there's the uh, uh, former chairman of Fox News, Roger Ailes, Fox News anchor Bill O'Reilly, uh, Fox News anchor Eric Bolling, uh, former New York Congressman Anthony Weiner, comedian Bill Cosby. I mean, you know, and that's just a few of the big names uh, in the last 12 months. So clearly, you know, there is change that these big names are actually being exposed and, and being you know, brought to some kind of justice. So, uh, thank you guys for being Best with us. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Well, come